Hi everyone, welcome back to the Cook and Smile podcast brought to you by Maca Media. Today is a different day for a different reason. Yeah. We've got some stellar guests coming up over the next couple of weeks, fitting in with the theme of the last couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. However, before we get into that sort of trail of guests, we really thought about giving this one to you guys, the audience. We wanted to stop and appreciate you know, how far we've come and, and the audience base that we've built and, come um, so far. and appreciate and appreciate you guys. No, that wasn't a, yeah. a bad joke. That was just saying we've come so far. Mm. Fuck. You meant it as a joke. <laughs> <laughs> we'll keep that hidden and we'll keep going. So today we unpack some requested segments from you guys, yep. some Q and A's from you guys, a few other things from you guys. Historical figures that you'd most like to meet. Um, what else? I can't even remember. Conspiracy. <laughs> Conspiracy theories, yeah. But basically, we, we want to have an open conversation with you guys. So thank you for messaging in. Um, As you can see right now, we're surrounded by nature. Yes. <laughs> Look at this graph. Um, and some nice mountains. And, a and we talk about June. We talk about June. Wow. Okay, I think that's enough from the intro. We're going to get into it. Yep. Welcome back to the Cougar Smile Podcast. <laughs> but you didn't, uh, didn't didn't expect that. <laughs> yes, me, me introducing brought the, to you by the podcast. Brought to you by Maca Media. Um, I'm your host Johnny Kane. Uh, joined today by Cam. Hey everyone. And we're really excited because you know who the focus of today's podcast is? You, the listeners, all seventy five of you that have listened over this journey. Hey, hey, hey. Thank you hey, so hey, much. Hey, hey. And this episode is about giving back to Johnny. you because we love you. Johnny. Yes. Let's not overstep. All 20 of All you. All 20 of you. Thank you so much. That listened multiple times. Thank you. Um, and we're just going to go off I was names. one of them, the man refreshing that page. <laughs> yeah, you would do that though. <laughs> no, nah, the, the Google algorithm picks it up. Yeah. Don't oh, worry, I've it? tried. Does it? I've tried. Oh, okay. Yes, this one's for you guys this because one's for you we've guys. got some stellar guests coming up, but not today. Today we've decided it's you. You, you. you and you, you it's alone. You. Yeah, I don't know about that, but we put some stories up on the Insta asking the fans we some questions about what you guys wanted to hear. And Wow, did we get just response, responses flooding in. It was like... Noah's Ark, man, the, 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 the heavens open and it was just responses falling from the sky. And I'm very, very, I really, very really like that example. See. That was a really yeah, good yeah, it's metaphor. Religious. It's a bit meta. This is the boat. This is the ark. This is, this is the ark. We, we are, are your ark. We are Noah's Ark. We're allowing two of every species. So one is Robbie <laughs> yeah. and then who's the second one? Taylor Swift. Olivia Rodrigo. Uh... Q and A, Q and no, A on Sunday a Sunday. Thoughts. Sunday thoughts. Oh, you can Q and A on a Sunday, but you can. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. You can ask me a Q and A on a Sunday. It's going to be about my Sunday thoughts. Are we? Are we? Are we? Are we what are your Sunday, Sunday thoughts? thoughts? Sunday thoughts. That was definitely on the piece of paper. Oh, of yes. printed out Thank responses you. from you guys. Thank you, someone that asked me what my. Wow, that's so nice of everyone to ask what my Sunday thoughts are. Johnny Kane, what are your Sunday thoughts? Wow. Well. My Sunday thoughts this week are related to June 2. Junes. Um, no, that was a funny joke. Because <laughs> Camera boy Rob liked that one really a little bit too much. Because there's like two Junes. There's two times June. Um, no, so uh, June 2 I saw recently. Um, and ever since then, I've been diving deep into the June law. Um, Jude law. You watched um, it before you saw the movie. The, the law. No, 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 no. You searched no, up all the no, law before no, you watched the movie. No, I watched the second movie and then I was got home and I watched like the book reviews for the rest of it. So I know like how the whole thing plays out. So I hope that the movies might be different, but June Messiah, I'm excited for that. But here, I've got a couple of questions from that. Um, first of all, and Robbie actually brought this one up, Christopher Walken, do you think he performed? Which one was he? Well, he was the emperor. He was the one that, I'm coming down to June to, to, to Atreides and... Was he uh, uh, Timothy Chalamet? Um, he's 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 gonna kill the guy. 
I liked Timothy Chalamet. See, I, that was my second point. I think I, I like I Zendaya. Still, I still think someone who's also at the and same Oster time. And Butler. I still think Oster Butler was good. I still think that someone who's at the same time doing like a press tour for Willy Wonka can't be the guy that plays that character in June because like. He's obviously becomes like a religious cult leader or like a, a super powerful. Um, Why don't you talk to him about that next week when he comes on the podcast? Because on the pod, yeah, I might have to. But he just doesn't command that, you know, fear or or. He's the. I feel like he doesn't. He's missing a presence. What's the there, word they maybe. called him? The. The, so, wi- the wid up or whatever it was. Yep. There's such an Arabic influence. He had like on that. three different names. There's a massive Arabic. There influence. was Paul. He was, he was known little, as Paul. Paul. Paul Atreides. And then there's a little little mouse or something like that. Yeah. And then Javier Bardem is like, yes, but the little mouse is very powerful. And then there was the, very the third mouse. name as well. Mahadid. Yeah, I didn't know. I didn't know. The I, Lisa I, I wonder why there was such or whatever. A, I was wondering why there was such a strong Arabic influence on... Like, Because the right. guy that wrote it was English, right? Let's get to the meat on the bones of this Sunday. One last Sunday thought on June. So June occurs in like, what, the year like 10,000 or something like that? I don't know. And they've basically scoured the universe and they've been across all these planets um, and they haven't found another life form or something like that. Huh? Like they haven't, they haven't found another life form. They're still all human beings. They're just different permutations of human beings that went to different planets. So the Fremen are a, a hum, like our species – the Harkonnens are our species that have evolved into that. I like that. Sort of. It means there's no weird tentacly things. Do you oh. think there's another human-esque life form out there in the universe somewhere, Campbell? Oh, Surely it's possible. I don't know. Probably. It's a movie. <laughs> well, the universe isn't a movie. The universe is real. Q&A. Q&A. Okay, we should start Q&A with the Q&A. On a Sunday. <laughs> so these are your questions. This is KSI so, inspiration. So Q... Stands for questions. And A stands for answer. And is it for and 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 A is for answers. Jim Vlog when. Thank you to our loyal fan. What? That asked Jim. Jim oh, vlog Jim Vlog when. When are we gonna do a Jim Vlog? Um, probably never. Yeah. I'm very insecure about uh, when I'm in. I'm very insecure when I'm in the gym, so I don't know if I want to post that onto the internet. It's just something about when you're bench pressing 200 kilograms. That's like. Oh, you don't want to give away kind of your secrets and your, and your technique. What do you think? Well, when I'm doing like the hip thrust glute mm. exercises mm. with like 300 kilos on that pelvis, mm. I don't want people to get the wrong idea. When I've got that band wrapped around my my thighs and I'm doing like crab walks all around the gym, I don't want like, you know, a camera seeing me do that, you know? So sorry to that listener. Um that yes. probably that probably almost made you want to listen want to gym vlog more. Um, <laughs> response. Uh, I don't know about that one, but another question. This one's actually a good question. Like, Great question. Thank you for this question. If you're watching this and you sent this question in, thank you. We're keeping everyone anonymous this time. We're not. We're not. We're not, we're not name and shaming Sol Bakshaw. So, back short. so um, he didn't ask this question though. No. Inspiration for you guys to start the podcast. Wow. That's a great question. Isn't that a great question? Someone actually cares. Someone actually I cares. I didn't know, but now I do. It's beautiful. I'm going to cry. We've kind of talked about it before, but in a joking way about me wanting to hang out with you more. It's definitely a joke. Definitely a joke. Uh, you always say that all jokes. Inspiration was a while ago, probably early 2022. And China came back from exchange and I floated the idea to him. Mm-hmm. And then we took a year to get it rolling. Yeah. But the inspiration, inspiration behind yeah. it. I don't know. I don't know. You came to me with the idea. What was what 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 in, what wanted uh, what inspired you to want to have a podcast? Was it another podcast that you saw that you were like, yeah, this is cool, or is it just wanting to you know what? get your face out there on the World Wide Web? Or I'm gonna say Joe Rogan. Yeah, he inspired me. He has some pretty cool people on. Making $200 million on a deal with Spotify. Yeah. So it's all about the money. Um, no, I'm kidding. No. Meeting cool people, having a chat and doing something you enjoy. So a lot of people work jobs that they don't like. Doing a job you like, that idea interests me and I like this. Mm. So that's why. That's that's the inspiration. Is this a job or is it a hobby? It could be both. 
you have to get paid for it to be a job? What if we're working for free? Which we're definitely Work not. experience. Anyways, next question. If you were a bird, what bird would you be? I would probably be an albatross. Because don't they fly like really long distances? And I love to travel. I'd probably be a, <laughs> I'd probably be a dodo bird. Would you? Yeah. Why would you be a dodo bird? A bit of history behind the dodo birds. They used to walk off cliffs. <laughs> Thank you for that history behind the dodo. Because they can't fly, right? Would they try fly when they go off the cliffs? Is that the whole thing? I don't, I don't know. Okay. Um, I would, Robbie said that I would be a toucan. Is it because I'm loud or something, Robbie? Is that why? <laughs> Moving on. Okay. So I'm glad you, I hope you guys got something out of, out of that Q&A. Q&A. Requested segments. Let's go. Funny Oscar Allen story. Okay. This is a good one. So I don't know. <laughs> it's not really a segment because we can't really have a funny story of Oscar Allen every week unless we <laughs> follow him around. But um, So there was this one time where I was at Clancy's in City Beach. I'd just gone for a swim. A good swim um and it's still the morning but i go up to the clancy's um i got for a swim at city beach go up to the clancy's you know cafe there the fish shop da, 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 da. and um i see oscar allen there and for some reason he's having like chips at like a really early point in the morning anyway i was like oh cool there's oscar allen next to him was noah long you know noah long from the west coast eagles um and so they were just sitting there. It looks like they were really getting along. This was in Noah Long's first year. So obviously, you know, Oscar Allen showing in the ropes, but big fan of both players. Um, but what I saw on this day amazed me. So what's happened is, is Oscar Allen has gone to eat a chip and a little bit has come off. The, like a tiny, tiny bit has come off the end of this really, really long chip. And literally before it hits the ground, bang, Noah Long's there. Om, nom, 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 nom. He gets all the crumbs before they even hit the ground. All the crumbs. Noah so Long? Noah Long was Noah Lover. Noah, Noah Long was underneath the table eating all the crumbs. Oscar Allen was impressed. Everyone was impressed. It was like, wow, great crumbing, Noah Long. Oh, High five. It's um, a footy term. And, you know, he just, yeah, got front and center, got underneath. Om, nom, 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 nom. I thought you were about Crazy. to say they were lovers or something. So that was but... a good, no. No, he just ate his, ate his crumbs before he got in the ground. So that's the story of Oscar Allen. Um, Really great story. I think the soundboard. I think the soundboard's broken. Um, yeah. Can we fix that, please? Would you rather like the ones from someone's birthday? No. <laughs> Move on. Could we do one? Would you rather? Would you rather have smelly feet or bad breath? Uh smelly feet. Smelly feet because you can hide the dogs. One hundred. One hundred. Yeah. Would you rather communicate telepathically? Oh no, every single language on the planet. Every language on the planet, because that's just cool. Communicating telepathically just ruins life. Because then you know all those inner intrusive thoughts. I've given you my answer, Robbie. What was it? Every language. Yeah, basically, yeah. yeah. Would you rather run into an alien or Bigfoot? Do aliens even exist? If so, alien. <laughs> Would you rather look like a fish or smell like a fish? <laughs> To what extent do you have to look like a fish? Is it like full body look like a fish? Because like, it'd be really hard. You got the... No, but like if you like properly look like a fish, you'd be... A, if you if you probably look like a fish, you'd be a fish. I like know a couple fish. people that look like Dory. Can you like mask it with like a, a lot of deodorant? No, you are fish. Link Africa? <laughs> you smell like when you walk into a fish shop. A raw oh, market. It's really fish. hard. <laughs> Either way, it would be really difficult, I think. You're not just like looking a little bit like you could a just fish. Wear a like helmet. Look- you could wear a helmet everywhere you go for the rest of your life. A helmet? Yeah. Doesn't help with your like face looks like a... Yeah, you just wear a Darth Vader helmet everywhere. Oh, like that helmet. Yeah. I thought you were talking about just like a bark helmet. You, so you then just, you look like then you look you're like basically a, fish. a prawn. Then you look like a fish with a bark helmet. That's even worse. We've got another segment request from the fans. You guys. Thank you. Mr. Culture. You guys. Italy. I'll take this one, Campbell, unless you want to take the Mr. Culture Italy. This is a little impromptu Mr. Culture Italy. Um, we might have to do a proper one later on, but did you know that pizza was not invented in Italy? <gasps> Actually, I don't think that's true, but there's something about it being invented in America. 
Well, the modern day pizzas invented. The modern day, the original yeah. pizzas invented in Italy. That's what so I in, heard. There you go. Did you know that Italians stole the idea, the concept of spaghetti from Asia? Marco Polo. Did you, you know that? Do you know the Italians killed people in a massive stadium for sport? And they were the first people to have stadium sport. Mm. Fascinating. In the Colosseum. Very fascinating. I've been there. I've walked through the Colosseum. Ciao ragazzi. Yes. I've got a message for the, for the fans in Italian. Can I can I say it? You can do whatever you want. Grazie i miei amici per um guard guardano uh il nostro podcast. Uh siamo molto contenti. It, um, grazie. <laughs> that was my message in Italian. We could come back with some more Mr. Culture Italy once we. Oh, that's know, it. Well, what what else is there to say? Cuisine, gelato, Cuisine, gelato pizza, pasta, favorite city in Italy. Okay, Florence. So Florence, I'd say Florence is great. Milan, Milan's a great city. Rome. 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 Roma is okay. It gets really hot in the summer, so it's kind of thing. The Dolomites are beautiful. Um, Venice. Yeah. Famous Italian person. <laughs> Famous Italian Still person. Sylvester Stallone. <laughs> <laughs> Tony Rigatoni. <laughs> Tony Soprano. Famous Italian person. I'm trying to think. <sighs> oh, Adam Driver. Adam Driver. <laughs> <laughs> Enzo Ferrari. <laughs> Adam Driver, very famous Italian celebrity. Um, there's some other sound <laughs> camera boy Rob um, but yeah make sure if you travel to Italy I'd say see the mountains so I've never been to the south before but go, go, go south and see Sicily and Puglia um, and then around the north of Italy is also really nice if you ever go to Italy and you're walking around the city and yeah, you're going to the shops, you're going for a bit of shopping and everything's a bit expensive. You don't really want to buy anything. But you see these nice guys walking around with hundreds of bracelets, nice jewellery yeah. chains. And they're like, do you want this? Do you want to take this? Yeah. Like, take them. Take they're the really place. nice guys and they're out there looking out for the tourists. And if you're in need of some cheap, bracelets, but iconic and authentic Italian wear, yeah. these guys, are, they're your plug. They're your guys. So go see them just walking around the street. They They're, normally have like a big arm just filled with like their bracelets. strategy. They've got this really beautiful strategy where they 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 give it they give the gift to you and, and they then say they just for say free. and then they say have a nice day and they walk off. And then that's they all that say, they, they definitely don't ask you for a dollar afterwards. Actually, we were at, we were going to the San Siro and sorry, we're going to the San Siro and and these guys are waiting outside the turnstiles when we left the train station. And Dad, my dad, like he's always been the one that's been like you know make sure that you if you you know you don't. Like you walk away if there's people trying to sell you stuff and da da da, but like he walks out of this train station. This guy's like, here, here, here. and dad just like, takes it, like puts his arm out, gets one, and and then just walks off. With it. And we're like, dad, first of all, you didn't give the poor guy any money. Second of all, you went against your rule about you know not, not not uh, not you know taking things that people offer. Um, but yeah, no, make sure that you that's authentic. Um, yeah, and. If you're standing outside of like a famous building or something and someone comes with their own special camera and goes, let me take a photo of you, yeah, please. It's definitely free. Take the photo. Let it's a once in a life. You're only ever in Italy maybe once or twice in your life. Well, well I've been like five times. Yeah, well, we're not all special like you, buddy. So you take the photo and then it's, a, it's an awesome memorabilia like moment to have and you take the photo home with you and you just the guy will offer you a high five and, and that's all he wants yeah. and you shake hands and part ways and take the bracelet take the photo it's, it's all free it's it's a massive tourist attraction for italy and, and it's why people go and look you these you're, are the, the heart and soul you're of italy. really a surface level kind of italy person but for me i've lived in italy for oh. about for about four months We're nice. and so when, when you see Italy, I'm more like I I I you, I, I, you I, I are am, Italy. <laughs> I do Italy. I I'm I'm one with 
the country, you know, like, so, so, so everything that Campbell says, like, just take it with like a grain of salt. Obviously that, that was very true. That stuff that you're talking about, but, but I'd say almost become friends with these people and make sure to and, tip your waiters and join their training. <laughs> <laughs> make sure you tip your waiters. Um, when you get pizza, ask for pineapple on it. Um, it's a good one. That's, that's a, good a good one. one. I got a lot of high fives for that one. You got a lot of high fives for that one. Yeah. There's a lot of high fives. Um, Make sure you make really like strong gestures like this, especially if you're not Italian. That's just showing they, your gratitude. It's, it's a sign of respect. It's like, I love this you one, this and your one. culture. That means love to the world. Um, love to the world. Say the word, um, <laughs> say vaffanculo a lot. Katsu fai. Um, <laughs> we might have to beat those out <laughs> because they are actually incredibly offensive. Um, Offensively. Nice words. Offensively nice because people will be offended at how nice you are. And they they'll just be like, what country are you from? Yeah. Um, they might offer you hospitality. They might invite you to their homes for an authentic pasta meal. Yeah. All right. Well, I lived, I lived in Italy, so just calm down for a sec. Um, so, yeah, in, in four months, you know, you really become one of the people. And I, 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 I'd almost identify as a Milanese because of the, of the 21 years of my life, a significant majority of four months was spent in Milan. Do you that's think, a, you think I, I feel like that's a long, yeah, that's a long time. So, um, shout out to, to the millionaires and, um, to all the friends I met over there and, and, and you know what, shout out to, to my people. Um, <laughs> and I hope that was some good advice, some good travel advice. So Robbie, when you, you, when you go to Italy, do you think that'll be like, uh, you, you'll follow those tips? Nice. Nice. <laughs> nice. Another, another one that was sent in, another segment request, and I liked this one, Conspiracy Theories. Was it? Was that it? Oh, that was, yeah, yeah, yeah It's yeah. time to let me cook. Yeah, 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 All yeah, right. okay. Campbell loves Conspiracy Theories. I've got some. All right, number one, the moon landing was actually fake. That's a pretty common one. I feel like that's becoming a more and more feasible one. There was recently released in NASA footage of like a massive pool, like of water and like with the cameras and every under, underwater cameras and the space station in the pool and it's a training facility, but there's conspiracies that that's actually where it all gets filmed. And there's a lot of NASA lately have been doing a lot of filming where they've been filming like astronauts on space stations and stuff where clearly they weren't actually floating around. They had cables and stuff that they were pulling around their belts and stuff. And there's a lot of conspiracy theories that lately they haven't actually been going to space. They've just been recording it in that pool. The government killed JFK. Oh, yeah, far out. That's poor Lee Harvey Oswald. He was just snapping some photos <laughs> from a tower <laughs> and he's been framed. I believe the one that an Australian um, theorist came out with recently that ha Lee Harvey Oswald just fired the first shot and then an FBI agent from the car behind, stood up, clicked off his safety, and as the car accelerated, he accidentally like fell back. I know it sounds crazy. Fell back, pulled the trigger, and shot JFK in the back of the head. That's why the you know the second bullet or whatever the the, the magic bullet that somehow curved like that came from that angle. The guy in the car behind, because he was you know he heard the first shot from Lee Harvey because the first shot came down like that, right? And the second shot was the one that curved. And hit him in the back of the head, and then I reckon it. I, I reckon that could. I reckon be the CIA crazy. killed him because of what he was doing on the grassy knoll. I don't know. I just, I've read that the CIA killed him, and Bobby Kennedy Jr. believes the CIA killed him, and he's his nephew, and he thinks there's classified documents that are meant to be released. Because like, but what was it? What was he doing that the CIA the, was happy about? Unhappy about? Oh, he was the war on drugs. I, I think all of it. There was something about him. He was going to crack down on it all because it was heavily weaponized he was and politicized and he was going to crack down on it all. I thought he was cracking down a lot on organized crime. And this is why they, that this is why Lee Harvey Oswald, because when JFK got in. It was either um, Cuba or the CIA. Okay. But hear me out. So when, when JFK got in, um, and this is told in the Irishman quite well. So this is the, the like almost the theory in the Irishman. So he used, you know, he, got a lot of support from the mafia and a lot of, you know, mafia lobbying as in, you know, coerced voting got him into power. And then once he got in power, he got his brother, Bobby Kennedy, Robert Kennedy to go into the Supreme court and start cracking down on organized crime. So the people that got him in were like, what's going on here? Why are you doing this? Um, cause obviously the Kennedys had Irish background. There was, you know, 
Irish involvement in the yeah. mafia, and, and the, but that's why that's why Lee Harvey Oswald was up there, I think. And then Jack Ruby, who was a mafia boss, killed Lee Harvey Oswald. Obviously, that might I not have been hit the power who killed him, but that was why that was set in place. Yeah, I think the CIA controls Hollywood, and the CIA would do that t- to discredit him. <laughs> controls Hollywood. Yeah, what's Hollywood got to do with it? Hollywood made the Irishman movie, and it's an attempt to discredit oh, no. Kennedy's name and say that he only got elected because the mafia voted him in and was corrupt. Um, no, I think the CIA true. killed Bobby Kennedy. I'm gonna, I'm gonna come out and say I'm not, you've heard John it. F. Not Kennedy. here first because it's a common theory. John F. Kennedy or Bobby Bobby Kennedy. John F. Kennedy and Bobby Kennedy, both, because then Bobby Kennedy was gonna come in and do the exact same thing, and they didn't want a repeat of. It's a big call. I don't believe that one. I do. Okay. Because there's the classified documents and then after a certain amount of years, all classified documents are meant to be released to the public. Yep. Like it's a, I don't know. You're really good at these conspiracy theories. And it's not been released. And there's a lot of outrage from Bobby Kennedy Jr. about it. And the moment he, well, he's probably not going to win presidency, but he he no. really <laughs> wants, he wants it to um come out. Like he's very keen for everyone to see it because by law it should be out, but it's being classified and concealed to the public. One more, one more good one, one more good one, one more good one. Uh, can I do two more? Oh my gosh. Okay, I'll do one more because it ties in with our next segment of Taylor. Oh, Taylor man. Swift conspiracy theory. Oh, Jesus Christ. There is a conspiracy theory out there that Taylor Swift is not really Taylor Swift, but is actually an exact clone of Xena LeVay. This is like the Paul is dead do you know the Paul is dead conspiracy that Paul McCartney died and that's why on Abbey Road he was the only one barefoot and that they sent in a clone and then there's all the, the Beatles played around with it and said Paul but is dead, Paul is the dead. The rumour is Taylor Swift is a clone of Zena LaVey and Zena LaVey was a prominent Satanist. Oh my God. I'll, I'll show you the photos, we'll pop them up. That's crazy. Okay, and, and what, what, what are their similarities? Um, they both made music and Zena Le Fay would make music to entrance people and lure them in to a satanic rituals. Oh they both had an obsession with snakes. Taylor Swift just got heaps of snake stuff. Oh. Uh, Taylor Swift had a video where she dressed up as the devil. There's I oh Spice my God. doing devil signs. Oh my God, that's... He got it. Here are some lyrics that you guys have sent in. So we had one person that said, none, good ones don't exist. We had another one that said, she sucks, so none of. We had another one that said, you so dope, don't overdose, which is actually a Kanye lyric. Then we had one in that said, think you're you're the shit, you ain't even the fart. That's a nice spice lyric. And then we actually had one Taylor Swift lyric in. I can feel my heart, it's beating in my chest. What song's that from? I don't know, but... Do we want to unpack it in Taylor time fashion? Yes, let's do it. So she can feel her heart, it's beating in her chest. I feel like she really had to delve into this one and really had to find her inner lyricism to really find a meaningful but, lyric that actually was so insightful that people would be realizing something that they didn't actually know. But where else could your heart be? Like your heart could be beating in your head, could be beating in your feet, your heart could be beating. Outside of your chest. So I think it's really smart that it was inside her chest. Don't you think? I think that it is a great example of Taylor's lyricism and how awesome she is as an artist making absolute bangers as a great person. Is very talented. What's going on? Go Taylor? Anyway, did we want to get into person of the week? Person of the week. This song was actually quite popular. We had a lot of person of the week nominations sent in by you guys, the fans. If you haven't forgotten, this episode's for you guys. We've been on a bit of a tangent lately, but we want to swing it back to you. You. The fans. You guys. Our favorite people in the world because you are fans because we have fans. Well, you are our favorite people in the world. We love you. Person of the week. Wow. we got a we got a few nominations and I think I might read them all out and then we can discuss <laughs> we can discuss a top three. Okay. We can discuss a top three to put on the Insta for the vote. So number one is Angus Laudo Loudon. Shout out. No context required. Yes. Um, number two is G String. Three Don't. votes for Polo. I think that's a reference to Johnny. Don't. Can we just say Johnny three votes for Polo? 
Well, you just said it. Johnny, three votes for Polo. I'm not making this up. This is there. Um, I didn't get three votes. Um, Max Grant is another one. Camera Boy Rob. Camera Boy Rob. Harambe. That's a, Harambe. I think that one's going to go. That's, that's going to go. Strong, that's a great that's a one. Whoever mentioned. said Harambe. Thank you. Neurotify. Neurotify. Great guy. Yeah, obviously. We love we love Neurotify. Julius Kane. So they're hitting all the Kane family members. Wait, I, they, they got me again. That was me again, wasn't it? So, no, that's the same. That's oh, you. Okay. So they, they've got both Kane family members and Camera Boy Rock. Um, Sam Kerr. Yeah, that's a great that one. I think that's going to go in. She's in a bit of trouble at the moment, but um, but in general, we love Sam Kerr. She's Andrew great. Tate. Boo. Thumbs down. Cooper Lindsay. Yeah, love that man. <laughs> love that yeah. man. Look, uh, do we? Are we allowed to talk? <laughs> I would we'll just yeah. keep it out of that. Yeah. Okay. June part two movie. Mm. <laughs> Interesting person. Great person. So I think Sam Kerr on Harambe need to go in. So person of the week vote Johnny. Harambe, Sam Kerr. So our next one that we threw out to you guys that you've answered is hot takes. Now this is some good stuff. Is this is it? Is this our best? Is this our best audience segment? It could be. Mm. I like the historical figures you'd like to meet, which is next. Mm. So stick around. Stick around. But do we want to get into it? Let's get into it. The Irish can easily outdrink the Aussies. Oh wow. Well, in the US, I think the Aussies easily have the US because the US all the beers are weaker oh, yeah, percentages. Yeah, yeah. In Ireland, are they weaker percentages as well? No, they're stout. Like, like Guinness is a, a stout, I assume. I, th I think. I don't know. I don't know. I think it's a very interesting thing. I think the Irish and the English uh, and the Australians are very, very similar in that sort of binge drinking um, culture culture that they have. Whereas other places is more about appreciate. And obviously, like people go to the Guinness factory and da da da. But I don't know. There's there's something about that. There's something about Irish and Aussies getting think, along just out of. I'm going to have to go with the Aussies. Yeah. Uh, just because. Well, at the end of the day, we're, we are basically from that part of the world, aren't we? Many of us. Yeah. Yeah. If art is the decoration of a space, then music is the decoration of time. Robbie, that's beautiful. Yeah, that one's from Camera Boy Rob. Robbie, would you like to explain that? No. No? Wait, okay. wait, so if art is the decoration of space. So like there's a blank wall yeah, and yeah, the, yeah. the decoration of it is the art on the wall. Then music, music is, is the decoration, decoration of time. time. Oh, I don't know. Is it? Isn't, wouldn't sound be like the decor? Music is sound, buddy. Yeah, but why could, like, couldn't it just be like the birds tweeting is the decoration yeah, of nature. time? Yeah, nature. I do like a bit of nature ASMR. But I love that. I love that. That's a good Sunday thought almost. Mm. Mike else? Tyson versus Jake Paul. That's a great one. That's just yeah. been announced. 57 year old. Wild, that's a, just a lose lose situation for Jake because if he wins, he beat up a 57 year old man. If he loses, then he lost to a 57 year old man. But also, if Mike Tyson at that age, I'm scared. Like, well, he, he like did an exhibi no, cause he did an exhibition gonna... match a couple of years ago. The spinal. And he's, he's still got power. Okay. I'd love to see Mike Tyson I and smack Mike. the crap out of Jake, but that would be unreal. I'll be watching that. And it's, it's, it's streamed on Netflix. But everyone's it's saying Netflix's yeah, first good. live sport event. But everyone's so I wonder saying, if it's free to people who have Netflix. Everyone's saying that it's just going to be like a, a draw. Is it going to end? Well, it's an exhibition match. They're always going to end in a draw, don't they? There's not going to be a winner, so it's going to be kind of disappointing unless there's a knockout. No, I don't think it's an. I feel like it's an exhibition. It's either knockout or bust. So hopefully Mike Tyson knocks him out. But I don't think yeah. he'd have the power to knock him out these days. Top three NBA players of all time. Is that a hot take? <laughs> Top three NBA players of all time. Yes. Well, the basic yes, ones. three. Three hot. Kobe, Jordan, LeBron. Kobe, Jordan, LeBron. But I'm going to go a different route. Yeah? Go. LeBron. Are we ordering them? Yes. I'll go my first one. Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan. LeBron. And who's your third? AR, Austin Reeves, baby, bang, 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 bang. Yeah, boy. Alex Caruso. I'm going to go Luka Doncic. <laughs> Patrick Mahomes. Luka um, Doncic. He hasn't won an MVP yet. Yeah, but if you watch this man ball. You're saying talent-wise? Just, 
I think by the time his career is over, he's going to be top but three. If he's sitting here now, though, you can't just. But I guess this is hot takes. I reckon Luka Doncic, when his career is done, will be top three. What about Steph Curry when it comes to actually impact on the game? And, and, yeah. and, and, and <laughs> have you seen those videos on Instagram where it's like um, Steph Curry inspired a generation? Gambling. There's just like people like running up the court shooting from half court and then the other team gets the rebound, runs up the oh, court, okay. shoots from I half court. I saw the AI of him promoting gambling. Oh, really? Saying you just keep betting until you win. It's simple maths. And they say gamble responsibly. <laughs> yeah. That's the one thing I don't get about betting. People are like, put this money on this multi. You have to put this money in this multi. This, this situation will never, you know, rise its head again. And then they're like, gamble responsibly. I've got another hot take. Taylor Swift is overrated. Boo. That's not very hot. That's kind of mainstream. Boo. That's mainstream. She's so not overrated. It's, she is, the, her fandom is like akin to the Beatles. <laughs> like we haven't seen someone that has this sort of hold over the world over, you know, just social media, general culture since the bit, obviously the Beatles didn't have social uh, media. But well, funny you say that because no I've got another hot take about Taylor Swift and her fan base. Oh, no. Taylor Swift fangirls are psycho. Her fans relate to her billions of songs about ex-boyfriends. Our audience just really tragic. hates Taylor Swift. But the, 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 there's, I think I've started a bit of a movement nah, with my Taylor times. Okay, now you, so now you've got your movement of, of toxic... <laughs> Majority males that are anti Taylor Swift fans. There could so be some females in there. We don't mm, want to discriminate. Uh, looking at it now, I don't think that's. Well, our audience of our podcast is mainly males. If you're a female watching this from the Sponsored by Women episode and you've stuck around this whole time, thank you. Thank you. And also, completely disagree with that hot take. That is the hottest of hot takes. Yeah, I know there's a few people that don't like the Taylor Times because of the controversy, but you know what? People are entitled to their opinions, just like I'm trying to defend Taylor Swift. So please stand by me. <laughs> and he's, all, he's also six foot five. He's a really nice guy. He's got lots of money. He helped out my grandma the other day. What are you moving to do? furniture and crossing the road? Favorite album is 1989. Um, favorite song is "How to Get the Girl" by Taylor Swift from that album. Um, didn't go to the concert because I, I don't know. I was sad she didn't go to Perth. <laughs> If Olivia Rodrigo comes to birth, I will go see Olivia Rodrigo. British, uh, last one. British and Australian humour is undoubtedly superior to American humour. British and Australian humour, I think, is very humble, self-deprecating. Um, they don't take themselves too seriously, whereas, you know, sometimes when I was away and, and we were joking with Americans, they'd take things very literally. So I think when it comes to that sort of sarcasm, um, Australians and British really get along. And Irish. I'm probably Welsh and Scottish, I can imagine. Well, we have yep. one more segment from the fans, for the fans, by the fans. Is this the best one? Historical figures you'd like to meet. Should we preface it with ours, with our historical figures that we'd oh. like to meet? I, I wasn't prepared for that. You can go first then. Mm. Can I give you three? You can give me two. I'd really like, uh, in light of recent, you know, events and, and movies, and so, I'd really like to meet Napoleon. Yeah, that would be cool. That would be interesting. I'm going to do three. Julius Caesar uh, is another one. And then also probably like a Jimi Hendrix or John Lennon obviously is a good one. I'd like to meet Genghis Khan. Genghis Khan, yeah. In a peaceful in environment. <laughs> I don't think that would happen, I think. And then... There's Genghis Khan in, in, um, in Night at the Museum. You can meet that Genghis Khan as well. He's more peaceful. I think it would be interesting to meet Hitler. Not so much out of love, because there is no love there, obviously. <laughs> More out of fascination. Like, I think it'd be very fascinating to see or just have a conversation with him. Understand his perspective. Behind closed doors. Not to understand his perspective, but just to see how he thought. Because obviously Hitler, awful man, awful things. Like horrible guy, didn't. Crimes against humanity. Yeah, it, it'd be interesting to see how someone can hate. But can be so successful in rising to power and cultivating an entire nation to do such heinous things. He'd have to be pretty intelligent to well, be able to do that. Everyone said he was a, he was a really amazing orator. Um, so, so I think it'd be yeah, really fascinating know. to see how he, his thought patterns worked in cultivating and moving masses. If you could study his brain into how looking at how someone could be so hateful and so pointed and targeted towards one race. Ethnicity, it's pretty, yeah. it's pretty, 
yeah, I don't know. And then being able to convince the masses. That's the thing. That's such a, such a bubble at that about. time is that the people, so many people, so many people just, you know, either turned a blind eye or got behind her because I think it was also just the, the, the fear and intimidation, which are obviously we talked about when we did history, but the fear and intimidation played a massive role. But like when he died, Germans were genuinely upset yeah. as well, which is crazy. Yeah. I don't know. That, it's just, it's just such a, uh, such a stain on history for them, which is it's, it's rough, but like, I don't know. It, it is, it would be fascinating to see. So people in history you'd like oh, to right. meet. Freddie Mercury. That would be good. Freddie Mercury. Yeah. 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 Hitler from another person. Mm. I don't know if that's for the same reason no, as us. No, but. no, no, no. Yeah. Uh, your mum. Histor historical. <laughs> historical. Is she, is she, Myself. <laughs> Well, uh, Jeffrey Epstein. Jeffrey Epstein. I don't well, know. when he was around, I would have been a kid, so that would probably have been the time to meet him. <laughs> That's a Theo Von Dog. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if you would have wanted to meet Epstein because either, yeah, because you'd probably be on the list. If you met Epstein, you'd be on the list. If you'd you either Epstein. be a victim or you'd be, be on, on the, the list. list. <laughs> So <laughs> it's like, the thing is that he would have just had parties and all these people that were on the list would have just been invited to these lavish Hollywood parties. And then they're just condemned to being on the list. Like Kate, Kate Blanchett, surely she's never done anything wrong in her life. I don't know. Mm. The Clintons are sus. I don't like, I don't, I think the Clintons are Bill Gates. suspicious. Bill Gates. He was on the flight list over 28 times or something. Oh my God. Crazy. But he's just this innocent. That's probably why his wife left him. Oh my God. No. Because <laughs> the flight logs were released. Move on, move on, move on. Um, Himmelkar Bakar. Himmelkar Bakar. Oh, Scipio. Yeah. Julius has watched videos about the First and Second Punic Wars recently. Oh, oh no, I should so know that. This person has watched videos about the First and Second Punic Wars. So Himmelkar Barker was um, Hannibal Barker's dad uh, and basically led, well, started a, 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 a well, Hannibal Barker led an invasion into um, ancient Rome um through the mountains through the through the Alps which is has only been done three times can you believe that? there's only been three times that there's been a land invasion of Italy one was um Hannibal Barker through the mountains he went in with like a hundred thousand men you know with 30,000 to try and you know invade 70,000 died in the mountains yeah yeah he went in with elephants and it was crazy so he was How he was, was he's falling off the mountain well yeah it was just awful conditions and like they obviously didn't have the technology that we have now um so, so the Carthaginians, the no, it's not that simple. The Alps is like ranges, mountain range. You can't just. That's crazy. I don't know, crazy. 70,000 people so lost. He did that like in BC times, like 200, 300, maybe even more before, longer before BC. Charlemagne and Napoleon. Charlemagne, the rapper. No, <laughs> King Charlemagne. And Napoleon. And Napoleon. Went through invaded, the Invaded, yeah, Italy through the Alps. Did a lot of men die? Probably less so, but this still would have been pretty brutal. We've just got some more in from our audience feedback that I'm going to quickly go through. So, would Cam swim the English Channel? <laughs> would you swim the English Channel? Is so, that as a solo? Q &A? Well, I think that's what people do, yeah. Normally you do it in a team of six. No, you don't. English Channel? I know someone's really? done the English Channel oh. in a team of six. I, I thought it was mostly like a, an individual thing. And you well, don't have like an event for it. Seeing as it's a lot it. colder than the rudder swim and 32 kilometres. <laughs> Well, we don't know <laughs> if you would have completed, you, you could have completed the Royal and kept going. So we don't know. Year of the week is a request for a segment. Well, well, you're late for that you're, one. You're lucky because that is already a segment. I don't know. Year of the week, we have to, we have to really put some time into and uh, the next year of the week will be very special. Thank you for listening today. This one was for the audience. Yep. And, and next week, should we tell our guests who our guest is next week? <laughs> No, you have to wait and find out. You have out. to wait and find out. But no, we've got some stellar guests coming up over the next few weeks. And today we just wanted to quickly give this one to you guys just to show how much we appreciate you. We love you. And all 25 of you. All 19 of you. Subscribe. Subscribe. <laughs>